Let's get right to legal analyst Ricky Kleeman and chief Washington correspondent for us, Major Garrett. Good morning to both of you. Uh, Major, you made your way to New Jersey to yep. Bedminster yesterday. You heard the president's <clears throat> speech. What are your takeaways? The president said near the end of his remarks that the United States government has waged a seven-year campaign of psychological warfare in this country against him. It's quite a statement. That means that, according to the former president, the United States government has consistently and for seven years perpetrated a campaign to change the world and the country's impression of Donald Trump as if he were not informing the country and the world who he was all along. That is a statement that suggests that not only is there something that he objects to in this indictment, which he is fully entitled to, but that the government has been against him and against him solely, intentionally, illegally, as part of a psyops. That is the kind of rhetoric that is, even by Trumpian standards, outside of any previous norm. So, Ricky, that's the political state of play. What about the legal state of play? What happens next? Well, what we have to remember is the political state of play drops over and spills onto the legal state of play. The legal state of play should be straight. It should be according to rules of evidence and procedure. That's not necessarily so because of the campaign and because of rhetoric like Major Menson's. What happens next in this case is Judge Cannon is going to issue an order, and that order is, thou shalt come to court on such and such a date, and this is your schedule. By such and such a date, you will get discovery. By another date, you will file your motions to dismiss or other motions about evidence. And on such and such a date, longer away, there will be a trial. Now, one of the first things, and I think it's important because Nate mentioned it, one of the first things Judge Cannon has to deal with is that order about whether or not Donald Trump can talk to witnesses or talk to Walt Nauda. Mm. Walt Nauda is indicted as a co-conspirator. Right. They are entitled at this point in time to have a joint defense, which means that they should be able to communicate and their lawyers should be able to communicate about the case. Ricky, is it possible that he'll see jail time? Yes. Um, we look at other cases that simply involve the Espionage Act in this situation of retention of classified documents or documents which injure the national security of the United States and aid our enemies. The average prison sentence for that alone is between four and five years. Here you add counts of obstruction and false statements. You really could be seeing serious jail time if he is convicted. If, He's and, entitled to the presumption of innocence. And to Ricky's point about all of the due process that this defendant, the former president of the United States, will be afforded, contradicts what he continuously says about this process, that he has no justice, that he has no rights, that he has no ability to advocate for himself. He has every ability to advocate himself for himself, and he will be given and afforded that ability, and he can test this evidence in court. That's what the process is about. Right. Denouncing the process at the beginning undermines the very process that he is being given, afforded, as every defendant does and has in this country. I mean, there aren't enough adjectives to describe this. It's surreal, it's unprecedented, right. but it seems to not really be moving the needle with likely Republican voters, who 76% of yep. which still say that they're concerned with the fact that this might be politically motivated. Only 12%, according to a CBS News poll, are worried that there might be some national security issues here. Right. This is sort of a closed rhetorical loop that very much benefits the former president. He got into this race early, so he could say, I'm a candidate, therefore I should not be investigated. Why would you investigate a candidate who's running for office? And as the former president, would he likely enter that race as the front runner? Of course he would. That creates for him an impenetrable shield. I could never be investigated. How dare you? I'm the political leader for the Republican Party. And that is the rhetoric that for the moment, Republicans are sympathetic to, for the moment. Thank you both so much for your analysis. Ricky Kleeman and Major Garrett, thank you. Appreciate it.